What are the objections to Mitch McConnell's COVID-19 bill? In the U.S. Senate on Sunday, March 22, Democrats blocked the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security CARES Act in a 47-47 vote that was split along party lines. McConnell indicated that he would try to pass the bill again on Monday, ostensibly so that senators could see how markets would react to the lack of financial measures so far. We're going to vote at 9.45 in the morning, 13.45 GMT. 15 minutes, after the markets open and see whether there's a change of heart. This timing was not agreed to, with the debate continuing later in the day than planned, seemingly with no further bilateral progress made. The first article also notes that Democrats decried the Republican proposal as prioritizing the needs of Wall Street and corporate America over those of average people, and would benefit corporate interests at the expense of hospitals, healthcare workers, cities and states. Senator Elizabeth Warren, until recently a 2020 presidential candidate, told reporters that we're not here to create a slush fund for Donald Trump and his family, or a slush fund for the Treasury Department to be able to hand out to their friends. The summary of the bill, however, states that it provides funding for small businesses and individuals, which would seem to benefit the average person, and includes a raft of healthcare provisions, including additional funding for the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of COVID-19, and limits on liability for volunteer healthcare professionals in order to help fight the disease. Which provisions in the bill specifically are opponents of the bill objecting to? Which measures are seen as benefiting corporate America over individuals? Democrats have been trying to make the case that the stimulus package contains within it a corporate slush fund controlled by the Treasury Department and headed by Steve Mnuchin, and Democrats believe there is a high risk of mismanagement or outright corruption. From NY Mag, the central flashpoint concerns a $500 billion corporate bailout. Its requirements that bailed out firms protect their workers are too weak. Protecting the workers is the whole rationale for bailing them out, after all, at least from the Democrats' point of view, more disturbing, it's designed as a pool of money to be doled out by the Treasury Secretary. That is to say, the money is, for all intents and purposes, personally controlled by Donald Trump, who selected the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, and could replace him on a whim. One obvious outcome of this financing arrangement would be to create the all but certain outcome that the Treasury would select the Trump Organization as one of the worthy recipients of its largesse. Trump's vacation properties have indeed been forced to shut down, and while an unbiased manager might not select the Trump Organization over needier coronavirus victims, Trump himself probably thinks differently. Indeed, at his press conference, the president did not even bring himself to deny that he might. Let's just see what happens, he replied, as if the outcome might contain any mystery. They also make the argument that the restrictions on the bailout fund that are in place to prevent some of the excesses by executives after the bailout of 2008 are weak, as are protections for workers who become unemployed. From Politico, According to a senior Democratic aide, the party's concerns with the GOP proposal center on $500 billion for corporations, stock buyback language that can be waived by the Treasury Secretary, only a two-year time frame on executive compensation limits, and no provisions to protect individuals from eviction. Democrats also object to what they say is an insufficient amount of money for state and local governments and providing only three months of unemployment insurance. Democrats initially asked for $750 billion in state aid, and Republicans have countered with far less. A further complication for the bill is the behavior by many of these firms and how they chose to spend money saved by the GOP tax cut. Instead of using that money to create rainy day funds, they instead used that money to repurchase stock in order to inflate executive compensation to the detriment of their workers.